Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number seven in B with me. We're in the book of Revelation today. Uh, fun illustration. I just got such a kick out of it. I'm going to title today that Jesus uh, plays with his keys and he twirls them about a little bit. So the illustration, let me just go to that because it's so fun. Remember when you were in high school and someone turned 16 and they finally got access to a car and they <laughs> they prominently toy with their keys like all day long. They jiggle them when they're in their pocket. They put them on the table. They make sure that you see them. They they jingle them uh, out of their pocket and in their hand. They twirl them about on their finger. They might toss them up and up and down. And they're saying, I'm 16. I have control of an automobile. I have been given responsibilities and duties which I am able to meet. In our passage today, Jesus is going to say the same thing about death in Hades. Listen in. This is Revelation chapter 1. Uh, just before I do, remember, uh, this, this book opens with a revelation of John. He sees and is instructed to write down what he sees. First, he sees the seven churches, which are pictured as lampstand, and then as if that's not enough, then he... Uh, sees in the middle of him he sees jesus and he's royally robed and he's got this sash of gold he's got this holy hair he's got these powerfully able feet he's got hand that can hold an army uh he actually has seven angels how many angels do you need to to be an army the answer is just one but uh seven what the heck it's even even better he's got this mouth from which and from forth goes the accomplishing sword of his word and then my personal favorite is he's got eyes like flame of fire and a voice that roars like the roar of many waters. All right, so then, then this happens. Revelation 117. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. No kidding. But he laid his hand on me, his right hand on me, saying, fear not. Then he's going to talk about his bona fides, his qualifications here. He says, uh, fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. And then some final instructions for him here. Write, therefore, write, these, write therefore the things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So of great comfort, and, and this, is the, this is the beauty with all these incredible qualifications that Jesus is describing. He also puts his hand on John and puts his hand on us and says, hey, I've got this, and, and specifically, I've got this for you. He tells him not to be afraid. I am the first and the last. So he was there at the beginning. He's going to be there at the end. He's there in the middle. I am the living one. And the, 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 the cool thing today is that this makes all the difference. He is here. He's not static. He's not frozen or remote. He's not fall, far away. He's within our, our arm's reach. Uh and then the big qualification is he says, I died. And this is the this is so important for us. He needs to have died for you because your sins need to be taken care of, needed to be taken care of. So write this down. Somebody had to first be sorry for your sins so that you could one day be sorry for your sins. Write this down. He had to first take your sins seriously so that you could one day take your sins seriously. Write this down. The only reason that Jesus died was to help you live without sin. Otherwise, what hope do you have for change? So verse 18, I'm the living one. I died. Behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. And this, is, this just made me laugh. The 16-year-old jiggling their keys and showing their keys and saying, Jesus says, I've got the keys of death. I've got this. I've got the keys of Hades. I've got this. I'm in control. 
This made me think of the the passage in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, um, which I can't seem to find it at the moment. (laughs) Hold on. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, I tell you this, brother, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. Verse 53, for this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, the mortal puts on the immortality, and then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And, O oh, death, where's your victory? O oh, death, where's your sting? And death has had a sting for a long time. And Jesus says, nope, I got it. We're taking care of that. Verse 57, but thanks to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, brothers, be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of Jesus. In other words, let the the reality of this thing that's going to happen, that Jesus has the keys of death and the keys of Hades, let it change you. So it's been fun to go through these bona fides, that these are documented legitimacies of Christ. There is credentials. And absent these, we are trapped in the pattern of the practice and the punishment of sin. Write that down. So 100% of people know what this is like to be trapped in the practice, the pattern, and the punishment of sin. Jesus rides in heroically here with royal white robes, bronze boots ready to go, a sorty mouth ready to fight, accomplished in flaming eyes of intent. And then he puts his hand on her shoulders. He twirls his key about a little bit and he says, I've got this. I've got these keys. I've got this for you. What a vision today. Thanks for being with me.